explain to me why they're having this thing so far outside of town. No neighbours. Who cares about the neighbours? Have you ever been to a party before? We're not talking about a bloody birthday party either. I'm just saying, they could have had this thing where there's lights and electricity. Hey, you said you wanted help set up. No, no. You said you wanted to help set up, and then you kind of dragged me along for shits and giggles. Oh, and by the way, thanks. Are you going to be like this all day? Like what? Like freaked out because we're in the middle of nowhere and some crazy family of mutants is probably going to kill us. Like that, you mean? Crazy family of mutants. Could happen. Well, I guess I shouldn't tell you the other reason why we picked this spot to have the party, then. So when you say something like that, I know you'd better just tell me. Well, it's not exactly a secret. Back in the 50s, the Whitmores were the richest family in town. They had this huge old estate in the middle of nowhere, right? They had this swanky masquerade ball in a manor house. At about midnight, the constable gets a call. It's from eight-year-old Whitmore boy. And? And the kids freak out. He tells the constable that some guy wearing some kind of a bird mask came into the manor house and kills everybody at the masquerade ball. And he made the kid watch. Christ. Yeah. So the cop shows up. The whole place is a bloodbath. The kid is in shock. They don't know who this bird mask guy is. They don't know where he came from. And most of all, they don't know how he could have killed 50 people at this ball. Well, the only clue they have is this written message the killer left behind. You mean like he left a note or something? No. Like he written it in blood. Nevermore. I heard the story. I thought it was just a bunch of pooey. I mean, it really happened. They bought it at the place after that and sent old Whitmore boy off to an orphanage or something. No, seriously. You're kidding me, right? We're having some half hour soy ray in the same spot as the Ravenwood Massacre. That's sick, mate. Hey, don't take it up with me. Take it up with Roderick. Oh, yeah, I'm really going to take it up with Roderick. It was his idea. Come on, mate, lighten up. This place is an historic landmark. Why do you think we picked it for the party? You lost me at historic. Anyway, doesn't this place still belong to the Whitmores? Well, I guess the town got it after the bank foreclosed on it. Roddy said he had to go to the town hall to get special permission to have this blowout here. Yeah? Masks. It's a masquerade ball, remember? Are we supposed to break in or something? I have a key. Well, nice and dusty. Yeah, Roddick said to leave everything dusty. More like a haunted house. How about some lights? I don't know where the generator is. Uh, Danny. I'm Raven! I killed a bunch of rich blokes at some fucking party! Bugger! Hey, don't get mad at me. It was Roderick's idea. Yeah, Roderick. Great guy, man. He's like a walking horror novel. I mean, I'm all up for having one last film before university, but this is just too... Hey, Pete's getting pissed in some flat in Watford. What do you say, sir? Okay, see, now these are the kinds of decorations I like. Oh, hey, no way. You're not drinking today. Uh... Yes, I am, Grandmama. Oh, no, you're not.
Where are you going? Well, if you do need a blow-by-blow -blow description, first I'm going to find the loo, and if everything works out okay, I'm going to start those decorations. How about you do the decorating and I do the drinking? No drinking today. Do we have any weed? No. <laughs> Open here I flung the shutter when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door. Yeah, hi, Roderick. This is Ray. Y your message is lame. Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that I figured out yours and Danny's whole plan to drag me out here into the middle of nowhere and scare the piss out of me. Real cute. Next time I see you, I'm kicking both of your asses. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling. I mean it, Roderick. This isn't funny. Wow, you always answer the door in your underpants. Please say that's what you're wearing to the party. Sorry, guys, I just got up. You have one new message. Yeah, hi, Roderick, this is Ray. Your message is late. How did you just get up? You never oversleep. Nervous for your big day, huh? Anyway, I just thought I'd let you know that I figured out yours and Danny's whole plan to drag me out here... It's terrific. Ray and Danny were supposed to set up for the party last night. Seems that they got pissed and decided to prank call me instead. I mean it, Roderick, this isn't funny. It's Ray all right. Sounds nice and hammered too. Hello, Roderick. I hope you enjoyed my little joke. And I think we all know how much you like jokes, don't we? What's the big deal? Well, he's been getting them for the past week now. This masquerade ball of yours is going to be your last one, I promise you. If you won't listen to your conscience, maybe you'll listen for my next call instead. What is it? <sighs> From what I could tell, just a drunken mess. Well, here's a crazy idea. Why don't you just ring them back? Because I don't feel like playing along with their little joke. Besides, they probably haven't even sobered up yet. So they got a little drunk while they were setting up. So what? So that means we're going to have to do all the work they probably didn't do before everyone arrives for the party. <laughs> nice tux. My Armani was in the cleaners. That's the best I could do on short notice. Well, never mind, Chandler. What are you going as? Mr. Bumhugger. Cut me some slack. I just got up. 
Uh, look, I've got to tell you something, and we've got to tell you now. What? Well, remember when Drake said he wasn't going to the party? Yeah. Well, Drake is going to be at the party. We should have told him after he'd had a few drinks. I just wanted to see how long I could get him to stand around in his underpants. <laughs> Looks like the day has finally come. The days of summer have just begun. Looks like the time is finally here. The school's over, let's disappear. We know the world is at our feet. We're cruising life in the front row seat. We're headed for the Thought you'd find you here. I was just getting in some practice, boys. If you didn't make the team, Drake, forget it. You have to let it go. That's all. I'll let it go when I'm damn good and ready. Come on, mate, it's Cappy. I mean, it's the last time you probably have to see this hellhole. You enjoy it. You made the team. I'm probably going to end up working the farm with my just father. Let it go, let it go. Pembroke and I have been talking about your little plan, and we think it's a bad idea. So, I can't count on the both of you to help me. I thought you were going to let bygones be bygones and just have fun tonight. That's not what we spoke about. Why are you doing this to yourself? I mean, you hate Roderick and you hated the idea of the whole masquerade ball. You just look so pathetic, man. And you're being a wanker. I've got my reason. So if you see us on the street, Is one of them you being drunk? Oh, come on, man. I just had a few sips. Nothing I can't handle. Come on, mate. Roderick sent out over 200 invites. The place is going to be packed. Get excited. Nobody's going to be pitching up at that party. I made damn sure of that. You said you just wanted to go out there and play a few pranks on those guys. You didn't say anything about screwing up the whole party. Roderick screwed up the party by having it in the first place. So what? This is all about that rubbish that happened back at boarding school. You don't know what happened back then, okay? Look, you're out of it. Why don't we give you a ride back to the flat so you can sleep it off? We're sticking to the plan, Greg. So, uh, <laughs> what's all this about boarding school? Drake and Roderick have a, a long convoluted history together. Roderick set this whole thing up as some kind of big joke on me. I'm just making sure he doesn't get away with it this time. I can't believe you left your only set of keys with Danny and Ray. I can't believe you're drinking whiskey out of a martini glass. <laughs> it doesn't affect the taste. <laughs> well, as much as I dick standing around in front of this creepy old house all day, I think we should just probably break in. <laughs> <laughs> Speak of the devil. Hello, party people. We come bearing gifts. Oh, Terence, nice hat. It's my party hat. Uh, look, guys, we, we have a problem. What's up, mate? Um, Ray and Danny were supposed to drive out here last night and put up the rest of the items for the party. I gave them my set of keys. So? Where are they? Down to Fino. Ray left a really weird message on my mobile last night. It sounded pretty messed up. I figured they'd be here, sleeping it off. They called from here? I don't know where they called from. It was Ray's phone, though. Here's mine. After this, we'll have all the liquor moved in anyway. <laughs> okay, you and Terence get all the booze unloaded and we'll take care of setting up the rest of the manor.
Great. Well, we know Ray and Danny were here, anyway. Well, they couldn't have been here long. There's still booze left. <laughs> what the...? Well, it ain't strawberry jam. Well, if I had to guess, it was the fake blood we used to paint that. Why in the world would you pour fake blood everywhere? I didn't do it. it looks like somebody's been slid across the floor. <sighs> I'll clean it up, I guess. I want you guys to look around and see if Ray and Danny are still here. I suppose I should wipe this off. I think the kitchen's through there. Bloody terrific. But unless you think that I'm a piece of toast that you put that butter knife down, I'm not going to hurt anybody. Oh, of course, you've snuck in through the back door because you're one of those friendly psychos. You're not supposed to be here. On the contrary, you're not supposed to be here. Hi, I'm Chandler. Excuse me while I sneeze through here. My name is Whitmore. Bollocks. Double bollocks. Oh, you mean like on the restraining order that says you have to stay... 500 meters from this estate. This is my property. It's the town's property. We have a permit to be here. You don't. Oh, I remember you. Roderick. At that big meeting in the town hall. You're going to regret ever coming back here. What you said and what you did was not right. What's your definition of the right thing? Breaking in and stalking my friends. Right is allowing the dead to remain buried. You're making mockery of my family and of my home. And things you'll be a whole lot better off leaving alone. 62 people died that night, Mr. Roderick. Died screaming. You might have thought it was funny. But then, of course, you didn't have to live to it, did you? You had 30 seconds to leave this house, Mr. Whitmore. Then I called the constable. Oh, don't worry. I'm leaving now. But just remember what I said, you and your friends. I was there when it first came out of the moors, 50 years ago tonight. Oh, I totally think I scared him with my butter knife. So that was Whitmore. Every time he petitioned Town Hall for a permit to have the party on this property, he'd show up and cause a scene. Jesus, who could blame him? They foreclosed this place like 20 years ago. He probably hasn't even been here since he was a kid. Wait, the Whitmore kid? Jesus, Roderick, how many people are you planning on pissing off today? Uh, just find Ray and Danny, okay? I'll clean up the mess out there and make sure nobody else decides to sneak in. You forgot to tell us about that part. What part? The part where you decided to have this party in this house on the 50th anniversary of the Ravenwood Massacre. That's the whole point? We're reenacting the exact same masquerade ball they had just 50 years ago tonight. That's what makes it so much fun. What about the other part? 50 years before that. The Twiley sisters get murdered out on the moors. The old man's head they found at the manor gates back in the 1800s. You know about these stories. The Ravenwood curse. <laughs> oh, the Ravenwood curse? Don't play coy, Roderick. Every 50 years, somebody dies. Out on these grounds. <gasps> Those are ghost stories. Local legends. Come on. Whitmore's been milking this thing for decades. Nobody believes in the Ravenwood curse. And nobody believes that shite about a guy in a raven mask. Whitmore does.
You're definitely going to have to hustle. I think Roderick said the party was supposed to start around nine. Well, how about Roderick gets his ass out here and helps us a bit? Not over the bait. I'll set the shower and put on my tuxedo, okay? Now, can we move this along? <sighs> Fine. Fuck it. Go on, mate. I'll catch up with you in a bit. Time to get up. <laughs> I'm gonna kill you, Roderick. Nice booby trap. You better watch your back. <laughs> you better lead the way. <laughs> This is Ray and Danny's car. Hmm. So there's blood all over the bar downstairs. Blood up here. Excuse me. Thought you and Roderick said it was just paint. No, Chandler. It's blood. You were right the whole time. No, seriously, you're kidding, right? Helen? Yes, I'm just kidding. Then what's the blood doing all over the floor like that? I don't know. It's all part of the show, isn't it? Was a bit much though, if you ask me. It's Ray. He must have heard you. Hello, Sleeping Beauty. Did you and Danny forget about the masquerade ball today? Ghastly, grim and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, Tell me what thy lordly name is. Who is this? I'll make a formal introduction at a later time. All you need to know right now is that I'm a friend. Look, Ray, this is cute and everything. But if you and Danny don't make an appearance in the next five minutes, Roderick's going to be a wee bit off about it. I'm very concerned about you, Helen. Check the nursery. Why is that? What are you doing now? Calling him back. He's not answering. What did it say? Well, firstly, he was doing some kind of scary voice. And then he said something about checking the nursery. works.
think this was baby Whitmore's crib? I'd imagine the therapy Whitmore had to go through as a child. This is bad. Oh my. These are Roderick's invitations to the party. He had them packed up so he could bulk mail them out to everybody. Royal Mail was supposed to pick these up from his house last week. The idea was nobody was even going to know where the party was without an invitation. Who the hell could have done this? Well, we found their clothes anyway. I think I'd recognize Danny's huge trainers anywhere. You think they changed into costumes or something? Never mind the costumes. What are their clothes doing in a crib full of ruined invites? More fake blood, I suppose. Well, they could have gotten it all over their clothes and maybe taken them off. It's a hell of a place to stash your dirty laundry. You think Ray and Danny sabotaged the masquerade ball? Let's see. You get a strange phone call from Ray's mobile telling us to come look up in the nursery where we find A, a crib full of ruined invites, and B, two sets of bloody clothes. Who do you think it is? I think we should go and have a talk with Roderick. Roderick, we've got problems. What are you doing? It's Roderick's mobile. There's a message waiting on it. It's not like you said, it's his mobile. Put it down. I thought so. It was Ray, five minutes ago. So Ray's just prank calling everybody he knows. I'm not even going to ask how you know the password to Roderick's voicemail. I set it up for him. It's technically challenged. Hello, Roderick. I see you decided not to wait for me to call you back. No matter. I've taken care of a few loose ends for you. The rest of your friends will follow. Soon it's just going to be you and me. Then we're going to see how much you like my joke. That same scary voice that was on my phone earlier. Yeah, I don't think scary voices are quite Ray's style. First message. What are you doing with my phone? Uh, the little flashy thing was on. It was her idea. My idea? I don't care whose idea it was. Under no circumstances are either one of you to touch my mobile. Is that clear? Anyway, where have you been this whole time? After I cleaned up the mess, I went to help Stone and Terence. Seems like they just buggered off. They probably snuck off somewhere to go smoke a reefer. Great. Is there anybody besides us who isn't missing? Did you try and start the generator? Not me. The door's padlocked. Stone has the keys. He must have tried. Message deleted. Why did you do that? Look, when somebody's calling us from Ray's number, whoever it is, they called me a short while ago too while we were upstairs. It was Ray. That was not Ray. It was somebody with a deep, scary voice saying something about loose ends and how all your friends were going to follow. Fine. I'll call him back. I've tried already. He's not answering. Okay. Look, whoever it was that called us from Ray's phone, they told us to go check the nursery. We went upstairs and we found all the invites. They never went out. And somebody shredded them all up. They got picked up from my house a week ago. Nobody's coming to the masquerade ball, Roderick. How did this happen? We also found Ray and Danny's clothes. And they were covered in blood. Something's up. Maybe we should call the constable. We're not calling anyone until I get to the bottom of this. I don't think Ray and Danny would have sabotaged the party. They didn't. Somebody else must have been pulling their strings. And who could that be? Trent. How's the party going, yeah? We were on our way here when Drake decided to jump out of the car. We don't know how much he's been drinking. He's been wandering around in the moors for a while. We, we just found him I like... I can speak for myself. 
Thank you very much. So, mate, what do you think? I think you made a mistake. You're the one that made the mistakes. You thought you could drive the knife in just a little bit deeper, yeah? Just like in prep school, right? So you thought you could come out here and sabotage the party? Steal the invites before they could get mailed out? What are you talking about, you bloody such? Oh, that's what I'm talking about! I'm gonna kill you. You're gonna suck down some more alcohol and feel sorry for yourself. That's about the story of your life, right? I know the story of your life too, mate. Especially prep school. You getting kicked off the tennis team? Well, that was you in the bottle, not me. You getting pranked in front of your snobbish buddies? Well, let it go. Nobody even remembers it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm afraid I don't know what you mean. You ruined my life, Roderick. This party. It's just you trying to drive the knife in just a little bit deeper. I think you've given me a clear invitation to dance. You're too drunk to dance. Go home. You deserve to die. You don't know. Drake, let's go back to town. By tomorrow morning, I'm going to have you locked up for your little pranks. <laughs> Maybe I'll have Danny and Ray locked up too. Give you a bit of company. <laughs> so, mate, what do you think about that? I think I'm going to go for a little walk. Clear my head, get a little bit of fresh air, and then maybe I'm gonna come back and have a little talk with you. It's not like you're gonna be going anywhere. Anyway. Hi. I'm Chandler. We were actually at Manningsford Prep together. You probably didn't see me. I mean, I was in the drama department, so we were always you know, rehearsing. And I saw you in Pygmalion. Nice work. I saw me in Pygmalion. So, what's the plan? I'll ask. Waiting for somebody? It wasn't supposed to go like this. What wasn't supposed to go like this? The party? Drake? Everything. Roderick, you need to tell us what's going on here. Drake's running around outside like a maniac. Our cars are trashed. Old man Whitmore's running around. Well, what do you think it is I'm not telling you? Well, you didn't tell us about this being the 50th anniversary of the Ravenwood Massacre. Not this again. Seriously? You don't think that might have caused a bit of a problem for old man Whitmore? Look, for all I know, old man Whitmore was the Raven. I just wanted to throw a great party. That's all. Well, you didn't. Now what? I'm sorry, guys. Helen's right. This is all my mess. It's not your mess. You had no idea Drake was going to sabotage those invites or come out here and spoil this for you. Well, I'm responsible. I'm the reason everybody's out here. You know what I say? We've got liquor, food, music. Let's just have the party anyway. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to call somebody out at some point, right? Maybe hire a car or something? Drake did a real number on those tires. What about your car? We parked about two miles away, on the side of the road, where Drake jumped off. Drake probably went back and nailed those tires as well. well. Let me see if I can call somebody. Dead battery. Figures. I'll call some of my old drama buddies. If there's one thing an actor won't pass up, it's free alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> I can call a tow. Hold on. Let me find out where everybody is first. I need a roundup. Ray, Danny, Stone, Terence. Drake? It's probably some massive orgy happening out in the moors. We're missing out. <laughs> Look, for all we know, you know, Drake could have come out here last night and did something to Ray and Danny. I mean, why put those bloody clothes with the invite? I knew it was blood. <laughs> Let's be reasonable. I doubt even Drake has it in him to murder anybody. Come on, you saw the knife. He's out of his gourd. Oh, Chandler, drink more. Think less. Give me your keys. What do you need them for? Well, while I'm out there, I'll walk up to a car and see if Drake messed with it. If he didn't, I'll just drive right back. Uh, don't you think we should go with you? I mean, it's a lot of people to look for. The last thing I want you guys to do is go anywhere. There's enough people missing already. Stay here. Don't leave the house for whatever reason. And if anybody should come back, try calling me. What about calling some people? 
I need to find out where everybody else is first. We'll start calling as soon as I get back. And if you should happen to run into Drake, I'll deal with it. Don't like the way he said that. Me neither. to see what I look like under the mask. Remember the raven, Roderick? It used to be your favorite poem. Quite fitting, don't you think? I'm bored. You're always bored. Not always bored in a haunted mansion filled with booze. We should play a game or something. Like a risk or Yahtzee or, you yeah? know? I'd rather find a Ouija board. Oh, you would. We can play some strip monopoly. Okay, Ooh. okay, the removal of clothes. I like where this is going. <laughs> hmm, could always build a fire. Oh, cheers to that. Cheers. Okay, now it's a party. <laughs> oh, God, what a day. It's not over yet. So all those people really died here 50 years ago? So they say, you know, the whole masquerade ball full of well-to-do elites are dead. Throat slit like so many pigs to the slaughter. You know, Scotland Yard went over the whole estate with a fine tooth comb. Who knows what really happened here? They never found the person who did it. They never found Jack the Ripper either. <laughs> Anyways, the legend of the Raven's a lot older than this place. I don't follow. Haven't you ever heard the story? They say this place was the burial grounds for Druid High Priests 4,000 years ago. When they founded this place back in the 1400s, they found burial mounds everywhere. Of course, those burial mounds were on prime real estate, so they dug them up and all the remains and all the ceremonial rubbish was all burned. Oh my.
Yüzde! Supposedly, some old religious bloke comes along and warns all the villagers that the mounds are protected by an elemental, a demon in the form of a raven. Sure enough, 50 years later... 50 years later, something starts coming in out of the moors late at night. Whatever it was, it walked like a man, but the people said it had the head of a raven. And every night, it would come in from the moors and claim its next victim, a villager, a small child. They went looking for it, never found it. Finally, the killings just stopped for another 50 years. Then it happened again. Yeah, and again after that, every 50 years, until this night, so the legend says, till the ravens come home to roost. And that is how Ravenwood Manor got its name. You guys are messing with me, right? You can look it up if you want. Anyway, it's probably where Whitmore got the idea in the 50s. You think Whitmore killed 62 grown men and women? Wasn't he like 50 or something when it happened? I just think it's a little strange that they never found the raven. I mean, come on, a guy running around with the raven mask on killing people around here. subject or anything, but I'm kind of worried about Roderick. He's been acting a bit strange. Who knows why Roderick does the craziness that Roderick does. Uh, but he has been acting a bit weird, especially about wanting to set up this masquerade ball. It's a bit morbid, if you ask me. So what's the big secret between Roderick and Drake? It's not really a big secret. It was prep school, and there's always drama at prep school. Roderick and Drake used to be best friends. Well, sort of. Kind of. What? Those two? Well, that was the drama. You see, our Mr. Roderick wasn't always the geeky, intense, strange social misfit we know and love today. Back in prep school, he was the geeky, intense, teenage, strange social misfit. <laughs> Do you like Poe? Yeah. I already read this one. It wasn't as good as Usher, though. They went everywhere together, did everything together. See, Roderick's family had money, but he was an outcast. Whereas Drake fit in, but of course he was the son of a lowly dairy farmer who had gotten into prep school on athletic merits. And I think he had a hard time carrying himself with the rich kids, which is exactly where he wanted to be. Needless to say, Drake and Roderick became fast friends. Then one day, Drake drops a bombshell. That soul-destroying teenage popularity machine had claimed another victim. Hey, hey, you didn't call last night. I finally made the team. Can you believe that? Oh, you're coming with us to Tommy's dorm after lessons? Where did he snuck out two bottles of communion wine out of the red tree? Hey, mate, who does she think she is? Ooh, Edna Ellen who? It's so last century. No, you mean the century before that. Great! Other off! Who are you waiting for, darling? Drake? Nobody. It was, well, the first big love of Roderick's life, and it was over. And he was unable to move on, but Drake, I think, had already moved on. Let me meet another guy. His name was 
It's Ned Bixley or something. Mm. Sad story. Well, you bet. You know, Bixley vanished a month later and he was transferred to another school. Who knows? At any rate, the damage had been done. That still doesn't explain what went down today. Well, see, Roderick had the last say. One day when Drake was least expecting it. You bloody bitch! <laughs> this isn't over, Roderick! You're going to pay for this! Congrats on making the team! Farmer Drake! <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Is that what this is all about? What do you mean? So Drake's a full-on alcoholic psycho just because of that? <laughs> that has got to be the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Not really. You know, the rich kids have just started to forget that Drake was the son of a lowly dairy farmer and needless to say this was one hell of a reminder. Of them Bixie left or moved, or whatever. After that, Drake started drinking, got bounced from the team, and sank his chances of going pro or getting into a decent university. Ah, and Roderick comes out on top, makes new friends, becomes popular, and he just gets into high more college. And his family's money finances a swanky masquerade board at Ravenwood Manor to celebrate. Okay, granted, the last part is a bit morbid. So everybody missing, the invites getting shredded, Ray or whoever it is prank calling everybody? Revenge, maybe? You know, the heart does make you do some crazy things.
Drake? Is that you? Drake? I have to tell you something. What? Drake's not drunk. It's an act. I don't follow. He set this whole thing up where Pembroke and I were supposed to drive him out here and make like he went berserk or something. It was all just a big ploy to get Roderick by himself. Why? I don't know. But Roderick's my mate. I can't just let him walk around out there like that, you know? I'm sorry. I don't think Drake's going to try to hurt him or anything. I think he just wanted to have a word with him. I've had enough of this juvenile rubbish. Let me find Roderick and end this. Are you sure? Well, I'm pretty sure. Just don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Ray. You guys have to get back to the house right now. This isn't Ray. Ray is dead. Stop messing around, man. I haven't even started yet. When you get a chance, go over to the window. Somebody's waiting to talk to you. He came back. I was just asked for Moors. I must have passed out or something. You killed them. Killed who? You know me. I would never do something like that. You killed them all. How many people are dead, Drake? How many people have you killed? I didn't kill anyone. Excuse me, ladies. This is between me and Drake. You did this, didn't you? You went too far this time, Drake. Get away from me. Get stop it, Drake! Chandler, call the police. Oh yeah, I'm gonna call the police. Easy, <laughs> easy man. I think I can walk. Chandler, get the hell out of here. This is Ray's phone, isn't it? You've been making those phone calls as well. You got me! I've had it the whole time. I don't understand. <laughs> Feels just like old times, doesn't it? Why'd you do that? Why'd I do that? Um, well this is all your idea. Don't you remember?
something on your mind? Look, I can't seem to catch a break with those blokes at the school. I've signed up for the team three times now. They're just not going to give me a chance. It's like I'm invisible or something. I can relate. At least you've got money. Do you ever wish you could get back at those guys for picking on you? I don't follow. Payback, mate. Murder. What could we do that could get the entire town on its back? <laughs> we could burn down the school. No, not arson. Payback. Something scary. Like... Like that old story about Ravenwood Manor. A, a bunch of people getting killed at a masquerade ball. <laughs> That's a bit much, don't you think? Trick a bunch of rich snobs to a party out in the sticks. Slaughter them all off. Blame it on the raven. It's dead brutal, man. <laughs> I can see I'm going to have to keep an eye on you. What are you talking about? I never told you to do this. You worthless cunt. I'm not like you. Oh, don't be so mother straight. You're exactly like me. That was always the problem. I need you to help me get rid of Bixley. He won't leave me alone. I thought you were an old pro at getting rid of people. He keeps on calling my house. He follows me around town. He's completely off his rocker. Listen, I need you, man. I can't do this by myself. What do you want me to do? What are you doing here? He was waiting for me! I thought you were just trying to scare him! He was crazy. There was no other way. We've got to tell somebody. If anybody ever finds out about this, our lives are over! You killed him! He's not dead. We can still get him to a hospital. So you can tell the constable about what we did. I started this. You have to finish it. If you don't, I can never trust you. I can't. Do it! Or I'll kill the both of you. I swear to God I will! Remember now? I paid for that. I started drinking. And I got dropped from the team. No, no, you buried it. You lived with that guilt. I never could. You see, you made me kill someone, Drake, for you. And that part of me, the part of me that held that knife for you, got bigger and stronger and darker. And so I decided to have the grand masquerade ball, just like we talked about back in school. But why? Why kill all your friends like this? I didn't kill anyone. They all think you did it. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, you're finally beginning to understand now, Drake. You see, I staged this whole thing for one reason. To get drunken, belligerent, old farm boy Drake out from under his rock. Because I knew you'd bitch and scream and come up with some elaborate ploy to ruin the party. <laughs> Everything went exactly as we planned, Drake. Oh, hell! You even managed to kill me! As evident in this defensive wound! See? And all those calls you kept making from your victim's mobile! <laughs> Thankfully, after the last attack, I was somehow able to call the police and tell them all about you! You got away with one murder, Drake. You can pay for the rest! <laughs>
thy crest be shorn and shaven, thou, I said, art sure no craven. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven, wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, 